let me explain about the cytoplasmic inheritance in limnia by taking the example of dextral and sinistral shell coiling. See, limnia is a gastropart snail and this snail either possesses dextral type of shell or sinistral type of shell and this particular phenotypic trait is under the control of cytoplasmic content. So let us have idea that exactly what happens for the determination of this shell coiling pattern. See, we are observing here uh, in this figure two empty shells of limnia. Actually, this phenomenon we can study in case of limnia perigra, although there are several species of limnia. And in all such cases, the dextral and sinistral type of shell coiling may be there. But this phenomenon has been studied in much detail, particularly in this snail, that is limnia perigra. See, uh, this left one is a sinistral uh, shell of uh, limnia and this right one is dextral type of animal. In case of dextral coiling, which is found in much number, means such kind of snail will be in larger number. You will find very few uh, snails which will have sinister type of coiling. So dextral type of coiling is known as right-handed coiling. Here you see, uh, this is the opening of the shell. And if you see this opening, you will find that it is located in the right side. Actually, if you hold a snail in your left hand facing its this opening towards your face you will find that uh, this opening of shell will be towards right side so it is right handed coiling and uh, in case of sinistral coiling this opening of shell is towards left side okay so this is the way you can identify the dextral and sinistral type of uh, limnia now we can understand how the inheritance of this shell coiling takes place. So in the upper side you see, suppose these are two snails, one is dextral, other one is sinistral. And these two are being crossed with each other. This dextral type is a pure dextral. It means its nuclear genes contain allele capital D, capital D. So it is homozygous dominant one. The sinistral one is a recessive type that is its nuclear you know gene or gene present in the chromosome of nucleus that possess two alleles which are recessive type small d small d now we have to mainly consider that uh, from which side egg is coming and from which side is spermatozoa is coming before this let me tell you that this limnia is a hermaphrodite snail hermaphrodite snail means male and female reproductive structures are found in the same animal. So because of this characteristic, it is uh, capable to undergo self-fertilization, means when it is alone during its reproductive time, its egg and spermatozoa will fuse with each other and then it will be able to produce offspring. And when other members are available in the vicinity, they can go for cross-fertilization also. So it is such a type of a specimen in which self-fertilization as well as cross-fertilization, both are possible because of its hermaphroditic nature. Now people can uh, do variety of crosses to see the inheritance pattern, particularly of this, uh, you know, shell coiling. So this is specific trait they have studied by making several different kinds of crosses. But what is shown in this figure that suppose uh, in this particular case, capital D egg, capital D egg means it is coming from this right side, you know, upper parent. Capital D egg is coming from this uh, dextral type of parent. And the spermatozoa, which is fertilizing this ovum, is of a small d allele, means that the spermatozoa is containing the recessive allele. So this individual will be genotypically capital D small d and will be dextral. But see in the other case on this right side, what is happening? The sperm coming 
from uh, the dextral type we will definitely will have capital D sperm and then the egg coming from the sinistral type is of a small d type and when there will be fertilization then you will find a snail which is of sinistral type. So main point to understand here is that both individuals, both the offspring are of the same genotype. This one is capital D small d, this fellow is also capital D small d, but one is dextral, other one is sinistral. We can understand this aspect here itself. Why this is happening? This is happening because one of the parents uh, has actually supplied its uh, egg and that egg contains the specific protein in its cytoplasm which is responsible for the dextral type of coiling. In fact, uh, those parents whose genotype contains capital D, capital D or capital D small d, they are capable to produce uh, a specific kind of protein and that protein gets stored in their cytoplasm. It will be distributed in all the eggs and individuals, such individuals produce half a spring only of dextral type. So this fellow is dextral because it's uh, uh, the egg which was utilized for the fertilization purpose that has come from a parent uh, whose genotype contained the dominant allele. Here in this case, the individual is sinistral because egg uh, did not purchase that specific protein which actually triggers the uh, orientation of spindle fibers during the first cleavage division. We know that after fertilization there will be cleavage division and during such cleavage division the orientation of spindle fibers that actually um, that uh, matters. So it's uh, the presence of a specific protein will cause a right-handed you know coiling and if it is absent then left-handed coiling will be there. So this individual is sinistral. But then what has been done, uh, these individuals have now been allowed to undergo self-fertilization. It means this dextral fellow, it is uh, now undergoing self-fertilization. So the eggs, all eggs uh, which will be uh, formed in this individual will have that specific protein uh, which is responsible for dextral coiling because capital D allele is present. So such individuals produce all types all four different types which are dextral in nature. We can simply understand that the egg will be coming from this individual itself and the spermatozoa that will also be coming from such individual. So it will be a kind of self cross, capital D, small d, such individual if undergoing self fertilization then we will be able to have three different genotypic individuals that is capital D, capital D, small d and small d, small d. So these three different types of individuals will be there. But all these are dextral type, even those who are having genotype is small d, small d, because this is small d, you know, egg coming from this parent also contained that specific protein, which is required, which is actually responsible for the dextral type of coiling. In other case, here in this case also capital D small d such individual is being self crossed But we find that in this case also in the next generation the offspring are all dextral type. So we can understand how this is happening because in this individual which is sinistral at the time of reproduction or at the time of you can say gamete formation the capital allele is present over there. So it will uh, get transcribed and its protein will be present in the cytoplasm of the egg. So since this individual contain dominant allele, the cytoplasmic content of the egg will have that protein responsible for dextral coiling. And that is why all these individuals will be dextral in their phenotype. Now, in the next generation, means again these individuals, they are being, you know, allowed for undergo self fertilization. So those who are capital D, capital D, they will definitely produce all individuals of the same genotype and they will be dextral. Now such individuals whose genotype is capital D, small d, they will undergo self-fertilization, will produce all types 
which will be dextral, similar to the generation to which they belong. And then these will also be undergoing self-fertilization and will produce all dextral. But such individuals who are dextral, see this is important to consider over here, this fourth individual of uh, uh, this type. So small d, small d genotype is present in this individual, it is dextral. But now that protein which has to get accumulated in the cytoplasm for dextral type of coiling will not be synthesized because this individual is a small d, small d in genotype and this allele is actually recessive type. So in the lack of that uh, protein in the egg, uh, the uh, next generation progeny will be all sinistral. And exactly the same thing would be happening in this case also that those who are capital DD, they will produce dextral. Those who are heterozygotes, they will also produce dextral. Only the, uh, you know, this dominant, I means I'm sorry, this uh, uh, dextral type whose genotype is small d, small d will be producing sinistral type as it has happened here in this case. So what other thing we can learn that those individuals whose genotype is capital D, capital D or capital D, small d means they have dominant allele in their genetic makeup. They will be producing X either of capital D type or small d types because here heterozygotes they will also produce a small d X. But in their case, the protein material will be present in their cytoplasm and they will produce always in the next generation only dextral progeny. So it is written here that dextral parents having genotype capital D capital D or capital D small d will have two types of X but they will be able to produce all dextral progeny. And in case if there is sinistral you know snail, so sinistral parent with genotype capital D small d, we have seen a situation in which the, see here in this diagram, you see this individual is capital D, small d, heterozygous, but this fellow is sinister. So such type of cases are there. And in such case, if the individual is capital D, small d and sinister in nature, if that fellow contributes ova or X, unfertilized X, then from such X, only the dextral type will be produced because all such X will have the protein material responsible for dextral quality. So what we can derive means such writings here are quite important to consider. Quiling depends on the genotype of the egg donor parents. This is important to understand donor parent regardless of the phenotype of that parent because if the parent is sinistral type that also produces you know dextral types. Uh, if its genotype is capital D, small d. So that is why this sentence is written that coiling depends on the genotype of the egg donor parent regardless of the phenotype of that parent. Another point is if the egg donor parent is capital D, is capital D or capital D, small d, then coiling in the offspring will always be dextral. This I just explained that in case if parents are homozygous dominant or heterozygous, in such case the offspring will always be dextral. Then ovum donors having a small d, small d genotype produce only sinisterly coiled progeny. It is very much clear that small d, small d types, they will be able to produce, uh, you know, sinister type of individuals if they are contributing the eggs. Then the orientation of the spindle, this is important to notice. The orientation of the spindle in the first cleavage division after fertilization determines the direction of coiling. And the dextral allele produces an active gene product that determines the dextral coiling. So these are the important points we must understand. If Ooplas from dextral egg is injected. This is an experiment. See, this is another thing to remember that uh, through this experiment, we can have idea that it is cytoplasmic content which actually uh, plays major role because if Ooplas from dextral egg, dextral egg Ooplas 
is injected into uncleaved sinistral eggs. They cleave into dextral pattern. Even see if even sinistral type of eggs whose genotype is you know small d you will produce dextral type if the cytoplasmic contents from a dextral one is being introduced in it. However, sinistral cytoplasm has no effect when injected into dextral X. And the sinistral allele is a recessive mutation. So this indicates the entire you know study indicates that the small d allele is actually a recessive mutation that encodes an inactive gene product. So I hope that uh, with this much information you would be able to understand what is uh, what decide actually the coiling pattern of dextral and sinistral shell in case of limnia perigra. This is the species in which this aspect has been studied in much detail.